what got you into music in the first place? What what made you kind of passionate about music? Um, uh, oh God, I don't know really. Paul Weller, really, I suppose. Mod, uh, the Jam. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, wanting to be, uh, wanting to be like that, I guess. Uh, the music, obviously, Pistols as well. Uh, that got me into music, but that really didn't get me into wanting to do music actively. Um, I discovered the Sex Pistols before I did the Jam, uh, but um, generally speaking, it looked like a good job to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, an, an amazing, amazing job, and and those vans, like you can you can really hear their influence uh-huh. on Sleepers Mods, of course. Um, but so, was it was it like when you were younger? Were you, were you kind of very hungry to do it professionally, or was it such a something that you kind of fell into initially? Um, yeah, I was kind of really hungry for it because I really had realised there was nothing else really, you know. Um, I didn't want to work all my life because I wasn't, I, I, I was not uh, academically gifted to a certain degree, you know what I mean? I wasn't, uh, I really didn't take to any of the things apart from expressing myself and creativity and the idea of, I'd invested so much time in the culture of modern and in music itself, uh, that, you know, it seemed like the logical thing to do, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So when, do you, do you recall like a first time that you started making music? You know, what, what, was the, what was the kind of earliest experience you can remember actually like creating music? Um, sort of like being in a punk band with my stepbrother uh, when I was about 12. No, probably, no, before that, probably about 11. Uh, it was only a brief thing, but after that, I was in an indie band at college doing kind of wonder stuff type stuff. Uh, that was my first proper outing in a band. Uh, and then got my own band together about 96. Um, and then went from there, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's been an amazing um, journey. And, uh, you know, I almost feel like there's there aren't many... Um, acts kind of doing the same thing that you're, you're doing at all well, well there's there's no one kind of left that that comes to mind in the same way inspired by the acts that you mentioned earlier i was just wondering like how how did your um writing of lyrics and because i mean that's such such a big part of, of what you do it is the themes the lyrics um the subject matter how how did that develop and to what extent um would you say that that's important you know, important over the over the musical side of things, like um, it developed over a course of like you know twenty odd years. Um, I started doing stupid, sort of self obsessed, absorbed, self pity lyrics. You know, um, sort of uh, sort of stuff. Also, that was in in keeping with say mid nineties stuff, you know, the kind of, you know, amateurish kind of, uh, you know, like, you know, sitting around think, trying to think about deep things. You know, some of these bands were, uh, you, know, you know, people like Noel Gallagher were quite bad at it where they just, you know, sit there and talk about, you know, you know, oh, what's the word, fuck's sake. Um, you know, just just sat there, sort of think, pondering life. You know, and it's like in such a in such a shallow way. You know what I mean? I mean, there were plenty of them. Noel being just one example, um, but uh, around that period, so I was doing stuff like that. And then, obviously, um, uh, <clears throat> well, not obviously, but uh, I don't know. I just started getting into more. Uh, angrier lyrics when I became more conscious of the fact that my life wasn't was just not going anywhere you know uh, that I hadn't been given any I wasn't born with uh, uh, you know uh, into into uh, a privileged rich family and I realized that money talks and bullshit walks you know and it's like that's then I started just reacting from that really you know what I mean yeah uh, what age do you think you really it really hit home the fact that, you know, things are unequal in that way. Um, yeah, about 30 odd, 30 onwards, really, you know. I mean, well, in fact, 2021, 
sink or swim definitely came into into effect you know uh, i realized then that it was literally sink or swim you know you need the money and uh but you know after from 30 onwards when things weren't in cha- weren't improving i wasn't getting anywhere in bands uh and this this uh this um situation became worse uh yeah you know definitely from 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 then really i really started to start to shape uh my my outlook on stuff and and some people say that like the music industry is is harder than ever these days and you know it's it's got worse and worse and and certainly there's a lot to kind of indicate that spotify and among others you know all the streaming companies that don't pay artists properly did you feel you know obviously you're you're talking about inequality that's kind of been going on for a long time much longer than you know music streaming companies have been going on for but do you think that as as well as as well as like social issues that have been prevalent for a long time in the UK and, and elsewhere, do you feel like the situation specifically for musicians has got worse or do you think it's always been pretty hard? Well, I think it's always been pretty hard. It depends what game you want to play. If you want to be a kiss ass and become famous and, and sing shit and release crap songs and, you know, earn a lot of money in a small space of time, uh, then, you know, you can do that still. Uh, is it harder? I wouldn't say it's any harder than it was in the 60s or 70s. Uh, but if you want to be a celebrity, then you can you can go and do that if you want to do that. If if you know if <laughs> if you're lucky enough to, to to get through the bottleneck of uh, the the millions of applicants that want to do that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, as uh, do do I think it's gotten harder and harder? Um, I'm, <laughs> I think it's always been the same, you know what I mean? I think things like Spotify will always be around, you know what I mean? And what I mean by that is people making money out of you uh, and you not being in a position to do anything about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you resent that kind of system, those boxes that you kind of have to to jump through in order to to get your stuff out there, your albums out there? Because in a way, it's like the music industry as, as kind of, counterculture or rebellious or uh you know whatever kind of rock and roll spirit as it were that you've got you no matter what n- even if you're like the sex pistols or any revolutionary group you kind of like to get the word out there you have to fraternize with the suits sure. in, in some capacity does that sure. does that really annoy you or or do you just think of course, yeah, of course it annoys you yeah of course you, you don't want to be told by some billionaire that you've got to release an album a year <laughs> you know, you don't want to be told that. That's just fucking insulting. Um, but at the same time, I can't be asked to, to join some fucking campaign and rail against them. What's, what's the point? They, they don't care. They're massive. You know, they'll give up when they want to give up uh, and not before. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, they had, the, uh, they had the vision to rip us off like that when no one was thinking about that medium a very long time ago. So now they're bearing their fruits of their robbery. So is that, that's their problem, really. It's not mine. Sure, obviously, it annoys me. Sure, I'd like a bit more money for the, for the music that I release and not just depend on live income. Uh, but, you know, this is how it is at the minute. Um, am I going to stop it by wanting to stop it now? No, I'm not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, do you think that anybody could stop it? I don't think anybody uh, could stop it. No, I don't think so. You know, I think the, the I think people's habits, uh, it will be a slow process. And I think that has started this year. I do, I do, I do think this year has, has, has begun to lift the lid off uh, uh, the inequalities of streaming. But, um, you know, it's going to be a long time before uh, before that caves in. And, you know, someone else is going to come along and just think of something else that's just going to <laughs> take everybody's fucking liberties anyway. So this yeah. is how it is, you know, without being cynical, it's like, um, yeah, okay, fair enough. But I, I, I'm, not, I'm just, I can't be bothered to get proactive about it. In fact, getting proactive about it winds me up even more than fucking Spotify does, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, also it could probably be quite a, you know, quite a stressful experience that, will ultimately be quite futile because like Spotify are huge kind of, I've read about that kind of, um, you know, that campaign with MPs. I think it was like Guy Garvey from Elbow. And there was another artist who had been like Mercury nominated. I think she was called Nina. 
I can't remember what her name was. Yeah, but yeah. She, she, she sounded very talented. She had Mercury nominated, uh, like half a million listeners uh -huh. on streaming services. And she like is having to move out of her flat because she can't afford it, even though uh -huh. she's successful by anyone's de definition of success. Uh -huh. And it's very admirable that they're campaigning, but I can see why you'd say like, you don't want to be involved with something like that because Spotify are you know, a publicly traded company worth billions so. what, i mean it's, it's similar to i would imagine going up against um it would be similar to wanting to drive down to david cameron's house and beat him up you know um it would be similar to driving to any one of these cunts houses and assault them for for the policies they've inflicted on the country um i can't I don't know. Am, am I, am I, I could be totally wrong. Uh, people could overturn the idea of Spotify in very short space of time through sheer determination. But uh, I'm, 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 I'm afraid I'm not that person. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, also, it's like the youth, the youth culture is not, that's not where the youth culture is at. I don't think you could persuade any young people to give up listening to music on Spotify, even if it was like deliver, delivered by everybody's idols. You know, people just... time. Yeah, you know, you just can't. I mean, I listen to Spotify a lot. I don't listen to anything else, I'll be honest. Yeah. You know. It's easy. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, make make loads of money out of me, man. That's your problem, not mine. You know, uh, <laughs> eventually some, some kind of karma will get to you or whatever. Uh, uh, and, you know, we'll carry on. There, there, there is a way for us, you know. Uh, and, and to be honest, the struggle is part of it, you know, and I'm not saying you have to struggle because you don't, but the struggle is part of it. The battle against uh, and, and to express this in a creative manner is, is, is what it's all about in a lot of respects. And has music ever been, because your style and, and your songwriting, you kind of channel your frustrations into your lyrics. So has music always been in that sense like a, a type of therapy or a type of you know a way of channeling that stuff as opposed to a way of like forgetting about it all for for a while it's more like you're able to express your frustrations as opposed to just get, getting away from it all sure definitely i think it's uh, it's it's able it's enabled me to live an alter ego uh it's enabled me to to um uh to 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 kind of rid myself of internal internal anguish so to speak by transforming that onto the songs that we do you know it's, it's a form of it's a form of therapy as well you know what i mean yeah no absolutely i think people have a have a different approach approach but um you know when when artists uh, have an emphasis on on lyrics like it can often be the case that it's not just about like getting away from from it so i, I wanted to kind of go back um to, to the start of Sleaford Mods. Um, in, in your opinion, for, for the people who haven't listened to your first album, Austerity Dogs, um, what, what's your favorite track on it? Austerity Dogs, uh, it's got to be the, well, Flurry, Fizzy. Uh, most of the tracks on there are pretty solid. Um, yeah, it's a real slab of, uh, it's a great debut, I think. And the kind yeah. of debut album I dreamt of doing, I guess. Um, for, for what it meant uh, creatively and also culturally, I think. Do you know what I mean? It, it really did overturn uh, what was at that point quite a stale sort of landscape in, in many respects, you know. Do you think that the landscape has, has improved? And since you guys came on, on the scene, do you think that... Are there any artists who you feel like might have borrowed a thing or two from you or, or who might have been inspired that you, that you like? Uh, well, but current artists. Yeah, or, or sort of artists who've come around in like the last five, ten years. Um, the, 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 no, not really. I've, I've, you know, I've been quite influenced by two or three people that are doing stuff currently. Uh, but, um, but that's about it, really. I, I, I don't, um, I don't know. Yeah, that, that, that's where that ends, really, I think. The most recent album, All That Glue. Well, All That Glue was like a compilation of like unreleased stuff of singles that you couldn't get anymore that you had to go on YouTube to listen to, which was just insane, you know. Uh, and there's also, it was also a, a load of unreleased material that we, we thought needed listening to that, that deserved to be released uh, that we'd done over the, pit, the last, you know, seven years. So, um, all that glue was kind of like a greatest hits, but not, 
if you know what I mean. It was more of a, a kind of collector's piece, uh, which didn't take that long to get together, to be honest, probably a couple of months. Um, but aside from that, um, they just, you know, you just get that itch after a year. You want to record, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you want to get into that mind frame. And I like to throw myself into the mind frame, even if I'm not feeling like it, you know, because then it's interesting what, what comes out, you know. So um, it's kind of always a little bit of a gamble because, you know, it's such a minimal operation sleeve for mods. It just could at any one time fall on its ass. But luckily, uh, it's been all right so far, you know what I mean? And, and, and in terms of songwriting, are you creative like all, all throughout the year, you know, you, you mentioned that you kind of throw yourself into it even when you don't feel like it. So do, do you try and write like quite often most days or is it just when you're kind of focusing on a new project, you sort of work towards it and then take a break? Um, yeah, basically, that's, that's how it goes. I find that if you try and write, constantly write all the time, it's probably not the best thing because you need, you need to rest. I need to rest anyway. I need to have a cooling off period. Uh, which is what I'm going through at the minute. I've tried doing a few things, but um, I don't want to force myself too much because although forcing yourself can produce some great results, I can't be bothered, you know what I mean? I just can't be asked to apply myself and force myself for some great results at the minute, you know. I'd rather just wait for another six or seven months and, uh, you know, these ideas will come a little bit quicker, you know. Yeah, it's it's like if you force it, it's just going to be not as good. It takes well, the joy out of it. It's a little bit like shifting for gold, isn't it? You know, you're in the river all day. You might not find anything. And then, you know, every now and again, you get a little nugget. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's how it is. But do I want to uh, enter into that process now after such a short period, after, after after this current album? No, I don't think so, you know. And... In terms of like, obviously you mentioned earlier, live income is extremely important to artists touring. Uh, obviously we all know the situation um, with coronavirus. Like, do you guys have gigs scheduled in, in the calendar tentatively? Yeah, sure. This year we do at some point, which we'll be announcing soon, I would imagine. But um, uh, yeah, at the minute it's just static. You know, we had a live stream we were going to do next week, but that's been canceled because of, uh, because of the, uh, the new kind of outbreak so um we don't know what will be happening until obviously we get the go-ahead to do gigs but i'm hoping that'll be this year but um who knows yeah i i mean as somebody who's you know had political opinions and and you know channeled some of that in, in, into into their music what what's your kind of view on how this has been handled do you, do you do you think it's been um handled badly or, or or as well as it could have been or you know by by specifically by the uk i think initially it was handled very badly yeah and, and obviously we saw that in the amount of deaths uh you know particularly with people in care homes etc elderly people full stop um uh which was very sad you know uh now obviously they're in a mess still uh, but what I but what I gather from other countries, they're in a similar situation that started off very well. Um, but um, I don't want to defend this government at all, not at all. You know, I think it's just been a shit show. Uh, we've got a leader that isn't a leader; he's a very weak man. Uh, this this um, this combined with the tragedy of it all, with not working, just makes you very angry. You know. Yeah. To what do you find it pretty hard to switch off from it? Do you, because I've spoken to a lot of people who've kind of got sucked into like those YouTube rabbit holes or whatever, like yeah, engaging. No, I, in I don't do those fucking things, no way. Uh, <laughs> it's absolutely, it's just misinformation. You know, I don't care what people say and it's like, well, we could be this, we could be that, we could be anything. Do, do we need a pandemic to know that we're being controlled? Do we need a pandemic to know that we are being robbed of our civil liberties? No, you know, uh, and these people, a lot of these people weren't that bothered before, so why are they bothered now, you know? Uh, and I think yeah. partly down to the fact that uh, the lower classes in this country have got a restricted line of actual information, um, you know, uh, lack of education. So, that is going to build up even more. But um, no, I, I stay away from all that bullshit. 
Um, yeah, I'm online a lot of the time. I get into a lot of heated arguments about it, but I do not tend to listen to idiots on YouTube. Definitely not. Yeah. So are there, are there any kind of outlets or <clears throat> publications or channels that you respect um, who, who kind of align with your opinions? Um, I, I like Byline Times. They're quite interesting. Uh, it's quite a studied measure of what actually is happening in whatever uh, theme they're talking about, whatever, uh, whatever content they're trying to express, uh, usually to do with the government and the corruption. Um, I find that quite interesting. Um, you know, this I don't know, just generally I get... It's, it's just reading what people write, you know, especially on Twitter. Um, whether it, I agree with it or not, it's a good marker of... You, you, you start to get... You start to build up a picture of what's around you, you know. Uh, not necessarily getting answers or information, uh, but you just generally get an idea of the landscape, which is what I'm more interested in a lot of the time, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting, although Twitter and how representative, representative uh, rather, of, 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 the, of the world, um, yeah, it's difficult to know. I think, you know, yeah, especially with, you know, the trending things on Twitter, I think it's all bullshit. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, what people say in their actual tweets is quite revealing, you know, and it helps you build up a picture of, of uh, you know, what you might see around you to a certain degree, you know. I think your echo chamber is obviously leading the way to a certain degree, and I think we're all victims of social media in that sense. Um, but um, I try not to um, enforce uh, that uh, that by uh, further reading any uh, any news, really. You know what I mean? It's it, it's something I try and stay away from. And in terms of what you'd ideally like to see, because you've mentioned your frustrations. Uh -huh. what, what, would, what would an improvement look like to you politically in this country? You know, what, ty what type of government would you like to see? Is there anybody, you know, any party, any, any leader, any p person in politics that, that you respect, or do you just think the whole thing is, is a shit show? No, I mean, you know, it's pretty... You gotta be a bit of an idiot to think it's all a shit show. Because I would imagine there are some people in Westminster that actually do care. Yeah. Uh, of course. But I've just, you know, in the House of Commons, sorry. Um, but um, yeah, just some fairness, you know, stop slashing fucking <laughs> public amenities, stop slashing welfare. If, uh, you know, because people are struggling, will always struggle to find jobs under this capitalist umbrella, you know. Just try and help people out at the bottom a bit more. Make it a bit fairer for people. Uh, you can't really ask more than that. We live in a capitalist society, so people are always going to be chasing the pound, the pound coin, aren't they? Which, you know, effectively, which essentially is quite wrong, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's just absolutely wrong. Um, so if we're going to live under a system like that, then at least make it fair for people to a certain degree, you know. Um, give people a fucking fighting chance. Yeah, I mean, it seems <coughs> like wishful thinking in a way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 hope, I hope it's not, but... Well, I think, you know, to say, while we've got Conservative government, it will be. I think as much as Labour are ineffective and limp, uh, whenever they seem to uh, come, come to power, there is a little bit of uh, uh, an opening in the curtains for people, you know. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, even with someone like Tony Blair, you know, they, 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 it seems things seem to be a little bit more lubricated for people. Um, but well, it will be them next. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, well, there's going to be no one else, is there? You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, if things go, continue going in this direction, mm. I think even even sort of Tories hate the current government, hate the leadership, or a lot of them do anyway. So think, you know, yeah. they're not pleasing anyone. Well, I think it's down to Murdoch in it, really. Um, it's, uh, I mean, how many papers does that come control? It, enough, doesn't it? So it's, uh, it's whatever, however he feel, feels the wind's blowing, uh, uh, he will, uh, he will then, uh, he will then do that. I would imagine, you know. Is he as influential in America as he was? I think he might have sold. I think he sold Fox or something to Disney. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, but yes, very influential, yeah. Uh, 
or was. It, whether his powers weighed in, I don't know. You know, the documentary him on uh, documentary on him on BBC iPlayer is quite interesting. Yeah, uh, I but saw only. That. In, yeah, really good. How the mechanics work, you know, and uh, I thought that was a real eye opener. But um, but yeah, you do you do get to a certain degree, you do feel that people like him have a massive say in uh, what kind of political persuasion will uh, cover the country next, you know. Yeah, if you're somebody like Rupert Murdoch, what, you know, he's like 90 years old. Uh -huh. What's the motivation there for somebody like him? He's got money, like, why? Do you think it is just an obsession with power? That, that yeah, of course, yeah. It's, it, it, it's to be regarded as... Uh, um, to be regarded as contemporary, to be regarded as at the forefront. Um, that is the biggest uh, psychological reward out, isn't it? You know, uh, they're, they're never going to need money again, none of them. Yeah. So, so obviously, yes, it's power completely. But it's it's just quite odd in, in the sense of, um, you know, how's he going to be remembered? Do you think these people, because like, he's clearly not a popular guy, like no one, even the people who use him, it's kind of like a bit grubby. You wouldn't, you wouldn't hear people crowing about, oh, Rupert's like a great guy. It's all sort of yeah. done behind closed doors. So what well, do I would imagine their, world, their, world, their world's very small and their peers, their contemporaries are within uh, shouting distance. And it's, it's, it's a constant game, isn't it? Who, who appears to be the most clever, who appears to be the most talented uh, at the forefront, who appears to have the best moves and the best ideas. Uh, and this is their world, you know. Um, obviously, because the, 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 the destruction that he's caused uh, with um, the political uh, policies uh, that have, have followed uh, his uh, quest for power uh, from the people that are working underneath him. Um, you know, if, if he knew about that, if he really knew about that, would he do this? I, you know, he doesn't know about that because he's not attached to the real world, is he? You know, he's a billionaire. It's like, it's a completely different world. Um, yeah. I would imagine it's like, similar to going into a laboratory and putting your hands in those gloves and the gloves go into a, an incubator. And so you really are pretty much detached from the, the end of that rubber glove to whatever it's doing. You know what I mean? It's a similar thing, isn't it? You are, you are in a different sphere, so to speak. Yeah. He's in, insulated against, uh, I'd say so. Worried. I think it is all about what he enjoys to do and that's business. He's a businessman. He enjoys making money, but he also enjoys making moves. It's it's like some twisted chess game, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah. It seems so unappealing, but I guess maybe it's addictive, and people, you know, everybody's different. So that that is appealing to some people. Jason, thank you very much for joining us on the Greatest Music of All Time podcast. I wanted to finish by asking you: Are there, you know, in terms of music that means the most to you? that you yeah. would consider like the greatest of all time to you? Do you have yeah. like some artists that you'd like to name or some songs or, or, or albums or just, you know, anything off the top of your head that would- uh, No, the greatest, uh, whatever, it would be a collection of rappers. Uh, it would be a collection of singer songwriters, I guess. Um, uh, uh, the ones that have stuck out would be John Lydon, Paul Weller, uh, Liam Gallagher, Ian Brown, um, Raekwon, uh, Inspector Deck, uh, Ghostface Killer, uh, Cool G Rap, Nas, uh, the list goes on. People Fennec from the Meteors, Nigel Lewis from the Meteors, et cetera, et cetera. I could, I could name tons and tons and tons, you know. Currently, probably Aldous Hardin, uh, Alex Cameron, um, who else? Obviously, Andrew Weatherall. Keith Tenniswood, Two Lone Swordsmen, um, etc. I mean, the list goes on, you know what I mean? If you're enjoying the Greatest Music of All Time podcast, you can keep up to date with all of our latest episodes for free by subscribing. If you're watching on YouTube, the subscribe button is located at the top of the Tom Cridland YouTube page. It's also at the bottom right of any video that you watch on YouTube. If you're listening on an audio platform, such as Spotify, 
or Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe at the top of the page.